Hey guys, how are you going? So today I'll be covering .env files. So essentially .env files are used to store sensitive information um, such as credentials for your app. And uh, typically that information or that data um, should not be seen by the end user. And a few examples of that data is going to be things like uh, database login credentials, API keys or uh, things like API endpoints, etc. And it's also worth noting that um, this data is typically going to be um, environment specific. So, you know, if your app is running on different environments, um, uh, most of the time, uh, some of this data is going to be changing depending on, of course, the environment. So, let's just go inside the text editor right here. I'll be showing you an example of a .n file, and then I'm going to be showing you an example in PHP um, in order to actually access that data. But of course, uh, my example can be used across different languages, except it's going to be slightly different, of course, depending on the language. But anyway, let's go inside here now and create a new .m file. So I'm sure you may have seen it before. Essentially, this file looks like this, dot, uh, simply .env, okay? And inside here, of course, this is where you store your information. So for example, let's say that the application I'm doing or creating um, is interacting with, an, uh, with a weather API. Okay, so we would say, for example, inside here, weather underscore API key. Then we can say equal to, and then of course, right here, we can say ABC123, and that is my weather API key. And typically, you'll find that uh, the .env uh, API, sorry, uh, the .env uh, data or uh, the key, so there's a key value pair, so um, the actual name of the environmental variable, so weather API key, typically uh, these are going to be in uppercase and the data is of course going to be in whatever uh, you know case it needs to be, but essentially that right there is how to define um, a piece of data using .env. And then if you want to make some more, uh, you know, uh, include some more information, we can say, for example, uh, database credentials, I can say db underscore username equal to decode, so database username. Then I can say, for example, db password equal to uh, password1. And then uh, even uh, something like db underscore port equal to, and then a random port number here. So we can see how across different environments, if you know 20 people are loading this app, um, you know the db port uh, might change across different systems. So um, that's basically right there an example of a .m file and the data that may be stored inside of it. So now that we have this, uh, let's go inside PHP and actually access this information. So let's go inside here and make a new uh, index.php file. And I'm also going to be using uh, the php.env uh, library. So let's go inside here now, inside the command line and install uh, the php.env library. So we can say here using composer, composer require, then it's v, uh, v Lucas, I believe his name is. Uh, so vlucas php.env. Press enter now, and this is going to install. Uh, I think uh, one of the most common, if not the most common, uh, php.env uh, library. Um, so once uh, this is done installing, of course, uh, I can show you um, how to use it. But as I said, uh, different languages are going to have different ways and different libraries um, to access these files. But anyway, it is all done. So now I'm going to go inside PHP. And I'm going to uh, require the auto loader. So I can just say require um, real path DII vendor and then auto load.php. And that is the auto loader for, uh, for Composer. So now to use this .env uh, uh, library, I can say use .env, then .env, then I can say .env equal to .env, and then I can say create immutable and pass in here the directory path. And then I can say .env and then load. And that right there in PHP is gonna load all of the environmental variables from that file into um, uh, the getEnv function, or you can access it using the getEnv function. Um, but of course, like I said, it's going to change depending on the language. Um, but I do want to point out that uh, 
are passing in the directory here and the reason why it knows to look at this .env file right here is because of the name of it. So .env is a standard name for your environmental variables. Um, if you don't call your uh, files this name then uh, certain libraries may have trouble actually picking up uh, your name uh, or your file sorry. But anyway now that, I'm, uh, now that the uh, .env file has been loaded I can go inside here and say for example make a new variable weather API key and I can say get env and then pass in here weather API key and that of course refers to um, uh, my key my key value pair here so key there um, and that now if I pass in this I'm gonna get here the weather API key value so now if I say var dump and pass in here uh, weather API key we should see um, in the uh, uh, in the in the console here, I might actually use an echo for this. That might change. So anyway, let's do echo here to print out the value. And I'm going to say PHP, then index.php, and we can see right there we get ABC123. So um, you know you might want to of course use this variable now to connect to your API, and that's the basic usage of .env files. But I do want to mention one last thing, and uh, that is typically um, if your um, if a, if a project is uh, you know tracked using git or something like that uh, typically you're gonna have um, a, a separate file which is committed uh, to the master branch or whatever and that's gonna have uh, sorry that's gonna be .env.example and uh, this file right here is an example.env file and typically you're gonna find the exact same um, uh, key value pairs or environmental variables inside this file compared to what you have as your actual .env. So typically you don't commit to your .env file because these are specific to your machine. However, you do commit a .env.example because that one is purely an example and of course here uh, your API key might be you know example API key something like that something not real but it may also contain defaults that way when you actually pull down or clone the branch then you're gonna have uh, data are there or uh, environmental variables that uh, you know don't need to change but typically you're gonna have your .m.example, example and uh, when you pull a repo you're gonna only have that dot .m example and if you want to of course make a dot m you simply copy it and you paste it and you may name it to be dot m um, and you're good to go so that is how to use dot m files thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later